Good afternoon, everybody. So we have three violists playing for us this afternoon. And our first, Carlos, I'll actually let you introduce yourself and introduce what you're going to play, OK? When you're ready.
obviously memorized. And so we had a, a lesson already on this. Um, and a lot of what I was working on with Carlos is posture. Um, Carlos has certain uh, habits that actually is choking the sound or stopping the sound. And one of the habits that, that Carlos has is looking down and you even hear my voice change when I go to hold with my chin and I look down. And you hear, so he's having to work twice as hard to get this big solo sound. And if I ask you, Carlos, where in the piece from when you played did you first, other than a rest, let go? Do you know? I bet the viewers probably know. How about when you went to... Did you guys notice that was the first time he actually opened his mouth or stopped clenching? And the sound for those that know the piece, when he hit that G, it just, his whole, the sound really soared. What we go after is a spinning sound, and you achieve that beautifully there. I want you to achieve that kind of resonance and spinning everywhere, okay? So what we've talked about, some of the habits, he also raises his heels when he plays. So his center of gravity is very high. And what we like talking about is a very low center of gravity. So what I wanna do is I wanna just play the first chord a couple times so that you can lower the center of gravity and get a little bit of a fatter sound. And then we're gonna jump to where we left off at your lesson because I wanna talk about right hands, okay? So first he's gonna keep his mouth open, right? Not, no <laughs> teeth clenching and no lips touching. Uh, we already talked, Carlos needs to get a little bit of a different setup so that he can hold the instrument comfortably looking eye level. He can't really do that right now, so that's impeding his playing a little bit. So we'll do the best we can, right? All right, so first chord, without the octave, just exhale, right? Ha. And really trying to get to the bottom of the sound. We talked about a cushion, and we talked about preparing, so it's not just many violas, for those that don't know the word, are a little bit worried about that first chord, because they start without orchestra. It's you get up front of an orchestra behind you, you try to find that octave, and we're like, is it gonna be in tune? And most of the time, it's not in tune. So that's what is tightening us up, even from the get-go. So let's not worry about the octave. I just want open strings so that you can exhale, body weight down and under, high, and just sink in, right? Palm weight, body weight. Right? Because 
because the, the, the spinning of the vibrato, when we use vibrato, that helps the spinning of the sound. So we always want to make sure that we're doing everything we can. Um, you ready for the octave? So, even if you need to find it, but I just try to relax the hand. So every time he stops, he does marking. He just has a little note, mouth. So he goes to play, mouth open. Mouth open. And the more you remind yourself, it'll become a new habit. Just relax. Again, mouth open, mouth open, mouth open, mouth open. Okay. I'm not liking that first sound. I'm not supposed to say that. I think you can do a better job, Carlos, with that first sound. How's that? Yes, OK. Yes! Excellent, so that was spinning, but make sure you 
have to contact in the string right before you back. Now breathe and play. Set. Yeah, good. Yeah. 
type thing is, yeah, I'm wanting him to fill up the sound, but not by
person needs to listen is dead. So that he doesn't hold in his back. Let go, let go, let go, let go. 
There you are. And now you're going to stay, remember that poker face I know, but just it's not doing anything. And now your hands are your tools, set in the string, set the bow, use your paw weight because you're letting go in the hand. Don't go play down, stay exactly where you are. And just play that down. Yeah, no, 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 no. yeah, yeah. You see immediately what you did. You went to hold, and I want you to break that habit, okay? Yes, and on the end of the F sharp, did you feel the holding in the back? One more time, because I want to get a good one. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Ah, that was a good one. So again, it's none of this changes overnight. This goes for all the students when you're make changing habits. You can't just like flipping a switch. Well, I'm tight. Oh, she wants me to let go. Okay, I'm letting go. Obviously, we really need to find one note. Let go of my legs. Okay, how about my breath?
technique a lot in these classes because it's the technique that allows us to um, get the emotion across, to, to play the music, to get the moods, to get the colors. And I felt maybe halfway through, you started softening your right hand. Yes, he says. Um, and it's kind of like, this is perfect, a perfect extension from Carlos, what you and what we started talking about, softening in the right hand. Specifically with you, though, it was not squeezing with the index finger and softening with the wrist. Patrick, with you, I'm going to take it one step further. A lot of times when we talk about sound, with my students, I talk about the spring, not only in the knees, like if they're on a trampoline, not jumping, but just standing, or the end of a diving board. I want them to feel that spring in the knees so they're not blocked. And I also want them to feel that they're springy in the right knuckles. That's where we get flexibility um, to allow the bow to hug the string, right? You know all this. Uh, and so from the very first note, and so I, I must admit, I was watching the right hand most of the time. And some of the times, you know, the fingers got to be kind of um, straight and a little bit stiff. And if it's that, we tend to lock and then try to press to get a sound out. And what I was looking for, if all your knuckles were a little bit more still wrapped around the stick, but a little bit more give or springiness in the knuckles, um, I think that's going to help with the playing. So from the very first note, what I tell my students when they're working on uh, flexibility in the knuckles, we talk about, you know, it's like you're going in up bow mode to set the bow on the string, but you don't play in up bow mode. You've got to change your hand balance to down bow mode, right? Mm -hmm. So you guys can see that balance change. And in order to go from an up bow mode to a down bow mode, we can't be squeezing or desperate. So as Patrick knows, we set the bow on the string, we begin to soften, and that allows the hand weight to sink into the string. So first note, set, soften, and then pull faster than what I just did. Without even thinking about it. So then you can feel 
I don't know, sweet, tender, whatever the mood is, you can feel that, concentrate on that, and not like, okay, my teacher wants me to set, soft, and amp bowl. <laughs> yeah. Okay, a couple more times that first note, in the mood now that you want. And then, no, no, no. So the weight wasn't in the string before he pulled. Excellent. Just a little bit of give. If you go too low, then the bow's chasing the viola. Set? Excellent. And the warmth immediately. And then, good. You're releasing this guy. Try to keep that not released. I'm wanting that. You feel that? Concentrate on feeling the weight go to the pinky before you pull. Yes! Yeah! I, I saw it actually, and then I knew this, and, and then said, oh, okay, so, and it might be too loud, but I really, this is what I need you to focus on the flexibility in the knuckles. Set? Feel it? And do you just feel that transference of weight going? Yes. Yeah. And so, in order for that to happen, did you release index finger maybe, or what? Yeah. And Carlos, that might be something that would help you as well. Yes? All of us, quite honestly. Sure. What did you do to do that? I guess just instead of focusing on releasing the index finger, which has been my priority for this, <laughs> um, <laughs> focus on shifting yeah. to the pinky. So, shifting yeah. the weight to the pinky. Yeah. Awesome. And you actually, if you had a mirror, Patrick, and that's what I want you to really watch in a mirror, you actually would have seen the pinky curl and begin that pulling. That's what the hand does. The hand pulls, which then pulls the bow. Excellent, excellent. Now, what is the mood that you're trying to achieve? It's pretty somber. Somber. Do you feel somber when you go to play? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Will you feel yes. so? We're actors, we're actresses. And if it's a, if you feel the mood of this nursery builder is somber, then you want your audience to hear that in the sound that you produce. So great, we, we did the technique, but this, the whole purpose of the technique is to produce a somber, evoke somberness in this chapel, please, Patrick.
you'll give in the spring? <laughs> well, then why didn't you, young man? <laughs> so, peace <laughs> you held, right? So the idea is, release, you still feel the string and there's still going to be give. It may not be the same give, but there's got to be give and uh, in order to caress the string, there's got to be give to, Mr. Osachi always uses the analogy of petting if like a big dog was here and you go from the head down the back and petting that dog. In a sense, that's the caressing of the string, and you know, you're not gonna just hit the dog. <laughs> you kind of go with the curves of the dog's back. And that's why I'm wanting you to feel. Um, I, yeah, then. So let's work backwards. Take the top note, take the top note, and yes, so it's that ah, down the back. And then without effort, let it, yes, let it. Blossom out. This is another thing that I think string players have a misconception. If they want a crescendo, they make it happen rather than by letting go and using the weight. So, melting, sorry, but you know what I mean? It's just letting, letting go, which allows the sound to open up. Hmm. No? Can you see how? You, right. So you're holding and then you're fighting it. That's why I really want no right shoulder and I want you to feel the spring, right? It's kind of like I always use the analogy of an airplane. When an airplane's touching down for landing, they don't just plop down. Don't they, you know, first a wheel? Well, actually, some of the pilots. <laughs> <laughs> That's beside the point. Um, but they kind of touch down slightly and they feel the runway and then the airplane settles in, right? And I guess I'm wanting you not to sneak in, but without people hearing, you should feel the string and then move the bow. Feel it? Yeah, right? Now with the ease. Yeah. So after feeling that a couple times, right, and feeling how much you've got to let go, right, do it one or two more times, and then let's connect, and... Thank you. 
easy. Let's just try that. Good exercise.
equation. Um, I was talking to Ben a little bit about playing with the mouth open and not clenched just the other day. And already we started this beautifully open and I was really impressed to see that you weren't clenching um, towards the very last section that got a little more difficult with uh, chords. And at the very end, a little bit back into old habits, but I, was, I really was impressed that you're already trying to let go here to help the sound. And this kind of goes for everybody. Um, ben, we think, okay, if the audience is here, as long as I face the audience, I'm good. But if we hold the viola at a 45 degree angle, or approximately, most of us hold it, the F holes are actually going into the stained glass window. So if you were to, let's imagine the center of the, the, the aisle or upstairs where Holly is, if I were to say I want your F holes to face there, where do you need to stand? Let's see, put your foot away. Exactly. So I, everybody, when you guys go to perform, whether it's a concerto with an orchestra or a solo recital, it's really important that the F holes pretty much go to the center. So A, you don't close your audience, like, well, I don't care about you guys. Um, but so that you're engaging, but that also that your F holes can get to the center where you're playing. All right, so I love, like I said, um, third suite. Yeah. I don't know if Peter's going to go with that as well. There we go. So I want you to go ahead and start from the beginning. I love the fact that when Ben went to start, puts his fiddle up, and what I liked was the contact of the bow, setting the string. Kind of going off what we talked about, Patrick really wanting him to have give in the fingers. But what I heard in your initial, like a trumpet, ta, you know, it was very not or pressed or anything. You set and you played. Um, I really like that. I want you to play a little bit, and I'm going to stop you because something um, in the interpretation I thought was very nice. Most of the time, um, you're going through your phrases beautifully. Everybody says, with Bach, I want more dynamics. But I think there are places you can actually take a little bit of time. But what I really want to address is, um, we'll get to it. Again, it's actually in some of these separate bow strokes. I want to see if I can loosen up your wrist. A lot of the strokes, and when it's slurred, it's fine. You can use the arm to pull, but if you go, you immediately heard like I skated on the string. And you're, I think that's what I heard in your sound when you did all arm. So I would love for you to, as I talk about circles with the hand. So when we do the separate bow strokes, arm, whenever it's separate, I just want to put your attention to your hand and wrist more. But I'll stop you when we get there. Go ahead and start from the beginning. If you don't need the music, that's fine. I just wanted to stop and start.
beginnings of notes, yeah, the clarity, and ring at the ends of the notes. Okay, 
And that really is, you know, one of my teachers said, think about Bach like a road map, okay? Either a road map or a novel. Let's use both analogies so that you guys can apply what works best for you. If it's a road map, sometimes we have a yield, sometimes we have a stop sign. So this, uh, maybe a yield, you're still going, right? But here, that's a stop sign, that's not a yield. That's finishing, period, exclamation mark. If it was a novel, it's not a comma, it's not a period at the end of the sentence, it's chapter two, the next chapter. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. So these cadences in Bach, when we interpret Bach, we've got to figure out what is it? Is it just I'm taking a little time? Or <laughs> completely different now. <laughs> right, this, and thinking about the sealer, uh, what? Show me, period, next chapter, or red light, um, road close, I don't know, whatever analogy you want to, you want to use, Ben. Do da 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 period. Now, so again, we're moving. So again, your audience, before, get ready before you play. Set the bow, and. Set. No, is that like turn the page next chapter? It's a you're you're yielding and you're running into traffic. No, I hear no. Finish one phrase before. Right? I'm so, so I wasn't my analogy wasn't good enough. Um, I'll work on it for next time. But you really need to finish one idea completely. Take a breath. Maybe a singer would take a breath there. We should do what singers do, finish, breathe. And then that breathing gives your body uh, uh, an opportunity to recover. Okay, huh, it's calm now, next idea. Does that make sense? Yeah. Really full stop, clear the sound.
judge. Um, and pacing, just taking time. Um, don't feel like you have to rush through this crazy. Make it sound like you really, truly are telling us a story. Okay?